here are important principles, I guess, to help you mend your broken heart, recover, and thrive into the future, inshallah. The first point I want to discuss with you is about the feelings of regret. The regret of the time that was spent, the money that was spent, the emotional attachment that was attained, uh, regret about, you know, some of the history that still remains fresh in the mind. I want you to know that regret is something that is a very natural emotion to have, and it's actually one of the processes of healing. Without feeling regret, by actually repressing that emotion, that thought, you do yourself a disservice. What you want to do is channel that regret to a learning process and a vow and a covenant that you make within yourself not to repeat some of the mistakes that you have now learned and itemized as things that led to where you are today. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in the authentic hadith, an nadam tawbah. Regret that is sincere in the heart is the essential element of returning to Allah, of repentance. Now, of course, you can repent to Allah from a sin, but you can also repent to yourself and to your family and to your society from an error that had been done or from a life choice that had been embarked on. Regret is therefore a powerful tool that you and I are needing to use to keep us f focused and firm upon a positive future um, uh, plans and development into it, inshallah. The last thing that I want to say about regret is, as you live life, know that there will always be things that you regret. And every other person, even if you're not aware, has their own personal regrets. Whether it's academic mis misgivings, whether it's financial decisions, whether it's social interactions, or whether it's failed relationships. Everybody carries their burden of regret. It's how we manage it, capitalize on it, and learn from it that leads us into a brighter future. Second, I want to speak to you about feelings. And I want you to know that it is okay to feel it in your heart, that it is something that's on your mind. And it is wrong for people to simply say to you, just get over with it, it's, it's done, and, 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 and just move along. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to process, to feel, to reconcile our emotions, to reconcile the memories that we've shared together with someone who we thought would be a part of our life for the rest of our lives. Feeling it, of course, is not something that you need to do on your own. And that becomes the secret ingredient to mechanizing your feelings into that which is going to be positive. Feelings are things that are internal within you, but if they just stay within you and you're not able to express them openly and with um, a greater clarity and self-awareness to those who are willing to just simply listen, not necessarily offer advice, not necessarily find solutions, but allow you to just experience the pain of it, let it out and exclaim it out, then it becomes more difficult for you to recover. So you need to find that vacuum where you can just breathe out your feelings, let it out. And that's where you hear the Prophet ﷺ. He had confidants amongst his Sahaba, amongst his wife, wives sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This really beautiful incident during the uh, Treaty of Hudaybiyah when some of the Sahaba were really um, concerned and upset that the Prophet ﷺ had signed a peace treaty with the people of Quraysh that in their estimation kind of conceded too much uh, to the, uh, the mushrikeen of Quraysh. The Prophet ﷺ entered his tent and he said, I've told my people to remove their ihram, we're not going to make umrah. And they didn't listen, they didn't follow through immediately. So he had this feeling of, you know, I worry about them in, in, in how they have not fulfilled what I've asked of them. And his wife, radiallahu anha, Umm Salama, she said, O Messenger of Allah, let me shave your head. Let me show them that you've come out of the state of ihram and you will see that they will follow through. So the Prophet ﷺ expressing his feelings, expressing his concern, uh, allowing it to be known becomes a very powerful agent for change, not just for himself, but for everybody who witnesses it. And after she shaves his head and he steps outside his tent, they see that he's no longer in ihram. They see that he's not going to be perform umrah. All of them rush to fall in line with the Messenger Muhammad wasallam. Feel it, express it, and be able to move on into the future, inshallah, with strength and a suitable purpose of determination, inshallah.